Hello and welcome back to another Atomic Cast video. Um, I once again have no idea what episode we're on. Is it like episode eight at this point? Um, I think it's eight. Eight? Oh, that's like two months. Look at us go. Guys, we're so good at this. It is episode eight. Look at that. Um, so today uh, I'm joined by Jamie. Jamie, say hi. Hi, hi Jamie. Yeah. Uh, and we've got Lee down below. Lee, say hi. Hello. Um, Hello. Lee's just wearing a face mask because he's scared of COVID. Um, it's sometimes it comes through the computer screen and gets him. He doesn't quite understand the technology, so just bear with. It's no. okay. <laughs> a lie. Um, so today we are talking about events. Um, we have had quite a few questions in the, the like general comments of things, and it seems like a few on like the Facebook groups of like, I'm going to my first event. What do I need to do? What do I need to take? How does it all work? That kind of thing. So what we thought we'd do is we kind of go from the very start all the way through the process of kind of going to your first or your 50th event and hopefully um, shed some light on how to make it there. We did an event pre uh, did an episode previously with Mr. Rowan May. Uh, Rowan won the best newcomer last year. He went into a lot of detail about how to play the game better and some kind of top tips for that. So feel free to go and check that out as well. Um, it's down there, it's how to get good at MESBG with Rome. Um, so hopefully you can pick up some tips from there, but um, we'll just dive straight into like the practicalities of doing stuff, hopefully. So, <sighs> Jamie. Hello. You want to find an event. Yeah. Where would you go to try and find an event you've been playing right. mespg at home with your mates yep. and now you want to go and test yourself on the wider stage so my first point of call would be facebook uh well, any of us that use facebook are obviously uh for our miniatures games will probably be in a lot of groups maybe like the gbhl maybe like your uh we've got like southern southern england groups and southwest groups and all this sort of thing People normally post events into those, or post links to events to those, or are advertising events that they're doing. Uh, always a good way is through Facebook. Yeah. So, um, the uh, one of the things that, so Jamie mentioned the GBHL there. Um, the GBHL is the Great British Hobbit League. Um, there are other leagues in other countries if you're in those. Um, I know some people watch this from America and Australia and Italy and places like that. Um, give us a shout out if you're watching from somewhere that's not the UK. And um, if, if you don't know what the GBHL is, there's a video down below about <laughs> what the GBHL is. Episode three. Episode three. I know that one. What a pro. What a pro. <laughs> that was featuring, sick. Featuring um, Harry Parker. But all of the, GB, like once you're in the GBHL, all of the regional reps yeah. for the GBHL maintain, um, so there's a southern UK Middle Earth group, there's a Northern, yep. there's a bit like there's little regional groups that we all maintain. Um, so you can head over to find those or just yep. type in like wherever you are, Swindon, Middle Earth, and something will come up. Um, because yep. there's one of those, like you know, uh Basing Stoke, Middle Earth. I'm sure there's something there, like yeah, you know, you, you'll find one. Yep. Um we are currently working on compiling like a little list of them to put on the GBHL website. Um, but yes, if you're trying to find an event, head on over to Facebook. Um, have a little search for Middle Earth events. There's loads of them at the moment. Well, there's a couple of different types of event though, aren't there? Yeah. So, um, Lee. Yes. How would you help? Like, how would you work out like what kind of vibe of event you're going for? Like, uh, come again. You understand what I mean? So, like, <laughs> you've been playing casually at home with your mates. What kind of event would you want to go for as your first event that you're coming to? Uh, as your first event, I wouldn't even say a GBHL event. If it's your first event ever, um, just a local one that doesn't advertise as GBHL, um, or just a fun one, maybe a doubles event. Again, I, I, you could say GBHL, GBHL 80s. You could say that. Um, but if it's your first event, I still wouldn't recommend it. I'd still go for an event that's advertised as fun or has got a theme running through it because there are quite a lot of themey ones. Um, that would be my advice. 
Yeah. Um, um, I think it's solid advice. I personally um, wouldn't limit yourself. If you see an event and you like the sound of it, even if it is a GBHL 100, which are the uh, normally the premier events in this country, I'd say if you can get a ticket for it, still go for it. Yeah, I know lots of people who've had their very first events at big GBHL events. I know people who've had their very first game at GBHL events yeah. um, and, and still had a great time. Uh, there's always a little crew uh, towards the like, bottom end of events who are just there for a laugh anyway, um, and they'll normally help you out quite a lot. And even if you end up playing, you know, some Billy Big Wig at your very first Middle Earth event, um, they'll they'll help you out and, and kind of walk you through everything because they're nice people for the most part. Um, there's a few outliers maybe, but you know, for the most part, everyone's everyone's lovely. We're all here to kind of help grow the hobby. So yeah, I wouldn't rule anything out. Um, but in theory, a GBHL 80 is meant to be a fairly relaxed atmosphere, um, though they have been creepy up in spiciness a little bit recently. Um, that's a whole different that's a whole different thing um, <laughs> and then yes your kind of casual local events um, I know we run beginner friendly themed events um, and there's there's going to be others around your local area who will do um, so yeah head on head on over to them yeah. so I'm now booked into an event I'm going I've, I've said I'm going I have paid which is a very important thing make sure you pay um, how do I work out what type of like what army am I going to bring? What's the how will I pick that? What would you do, Jamie, to pick your army? So, for my first event I went to, uh, was at Element Games run by the guys from Drawn Combat, and I picked an army based on the fact that I like the heroes that are in it, I remember them from the films. Specifically, I played Lurtz and Scouts. I remember Lurtz, I thought, oh, what a cool character. And in his legendary region, you get to throw a shield at someone. I thought that was hilarious. So I took that on this. Nice. For those literal reasons. I like Lurtz. You can throw a shield at someone. That's hilarious. Took that list. Had fun. And then, Lee, let's say you're going to an event, but you... It's your first time going to an event, but you've played other game systems. You know what you're doing. You want to try and win this event. You want to prove everyone that you're better than a game that they've been playing for years. How are you going to pick an army to go to this event? Um, well, if, I, if I've been playing games before, um, you generally have a fairly good knowledge of what may or may not be good. So if you are going to try and do well, just look at the broad spectrum of all the armies and then then go, yeah, I think that one might be okay. But more importantly, like Jamie said, will I enjoy that said army? So I think it's a combination of, will you enjoy it? If it's a play style that you kind of have from other game systems, because you know a lot of it does translate. Like I famously yeah. have always been like high defensive armies in any sort of game I play. Um, so that does translate. So I went to Dwarfs is my thing. Um, so yeah, I'd say a combination of the three, what you think might be good, what you think would be fun and what suits you. Um, because at the end of the day, if you get sent a list from a mate who goes, Oh, I'll play this list, and you don't know the list or you don't know the game system, you're not going to do very well. Yeah, Middle Earth is one of those where uh, you, you can't, you very much cannot pick up an army list that someone else has given you, turn up to a game, and instantly win yep. because there's so many little things in those armies that kind of work together and combos and things that you just need to. You need, to, you need to know what's going on with it. Like, I've got a bajillion models, so I've sat here and gone, oh, that list just won a massive event. I'm going to copy it and see what happens. Took it to a friendly game and got absolutely spanked because I didn't know what it did. I didn't know why it worked. I didn't know what was going on. Um, so, yeah, come up with something that works for you. Fits your play style nicely. Um, if you want to go really, like, really try hard, have a little look in that event pack. All the events will have an event pack, and a lot of them have fun little, like, unique twists. So you can try and kind of theme your army around that. Um, or don't, you know. Just go with your favourite models and have a laugh. It's entirely up to you. Cool. Um, so it's kind of like jump forward. It's now the weekend before the event. The event's next weekend. Yeah. Um, most tournaments will ask you to submit your army list. 
uh, the reason a lot of tournaments have asked you to submit your army lists is basically as a TO, what we would do is go through and check all of the army lists. So we'll check that the points are right. We'll check you've got legal models in there. Um, just little things like that. Just making sure that everything's okay um, by giving them nice and early. Like the earlier you can give them in, the better. If you give it, someone gave them six weeks in advance the other day. That's cool. I checked it. It was fine. But if there's a slight problem, the TO will come back to you and say, actually, mate, like you could do it doing this and like you're, you're one point over, just change that down. Hello, Lee. Uh, prime example, we're going to an event this weekend and yeah. I put my list the week early like we're supposed to and both of my lists were wrong. One was five points over and one was 30 points under. So, yeah, <laughs> that's why. Oh, Lee. Uh, and I forgot to write one of my models on my list. So, you know, uh, it, it, it happens. Um, I, uh, I added up points wrong. Yeah, it, it happens to everyone. Um, clearly, mostly us. Um, I just found some tufts on my bedroom floor. That's exciting. Um, yeah, um, send it in as early as you can, especially if it's your very first event. Like, get your list sorted. Send it into the TO and just say, you know, could you check it over and make sure everything's fine for me because I don't necessarily know what I'm doing. <laughs> um, and they'll be they'll be cool with it. Um, and yeah, cool. So we've sent it in. Send it in nice and early. And when you send it in, please, please, for the love of God, <laughs> type it out nice and neat and send it in. <laughs> Include like your points values, if you can. Include like the model count and things like that. Because by gosh, as a tournament organiser, is it just the worst when you get uh, a oh. list that's being copy and pasted from... Like battle, scribe. battle scribe type thing <laughs> and it's just one continuous block of text and you literally cannot read it um it's oh it's awful um we've all been sent those lists and i kind of want to like deduct from tournament points just for sending a list like that it's the worst um but yeah type them out nice and neat for us thanks guys so we're now in the week before the event yeah. we are coming up on the event um, Jamie, would you like to give us a prime example of what you're doing right now, which is a bad example of what you shouldn't do before an event? Painting. <laughs> and um, when is the event? Saturday. And how much of your army have you left to paint? About two thirds. <laughs> right, we've all been there. We've all done it. Um, it's almost a bit of a rite of passage, isn't it? Painting an army until two o'clock in the morning the day before the event. Um, yeah. But if you want to go to an event and have a good time, don't do that. Yeah, don't do that. Um, get your army painted nice and early. Pick an army. Like when you submit your army list, if your army's not painted, don't submit it. <laughs> Pick a different one. Save yourself the time. Maybe if there's a couple of models left to do. But, but yeah, not the whole thing. All right. <laughs> and, um, and then when it comes to the very night before, uh, what would you be doing? So, Lee, you're going to an event on Saturday. Yeah. What are you doing on Friday? Making sure I've got everything packed. Ooh. Um, so that includes, yeah, just making sure I've got everything. <coughs> dice, state measures, army books. Um, yeah, snacks, drinks. Just make sure I just pack my bag. Dice, before I get tape measures, army books, snacks, drinks. Army. Army. Deodorant. Deodorant. Water. Yeah. yeah. What else we put in a bag? Uh, if you're planning on taking any photos or taking any videos or anything, make sure that you've got obviously your equipment that you need and pro probably a spare battery just in case. A phone charger, lovely. Yeah. yeah. Um, Wallet. Glue. Yeah. Always bring, bring some super glue. Bring some super glue. Yeah. You um, never know what happens on the battlefield. Yeah, someone might get really upset with your model and chuck it across the table. Uh, unlikely, but um, my tape measure killed four of my models the other day, um, <laughs> just as it like snapped back in. Um, yeah, so we got Daniel, Daniel Rock's army. Oh, Daniel's Daniel's Arnold that he spent ages doing like a out of production Arnold army that cost him an arm and a leg, and then he spent ages painting up, and then he carried it to the table and it then he dropped it, and it was heartbreaking. Oh dear. But then he fixes it. Okay. Um, yes. 
army <laughs> dice tape measure a copy of your army list written out for the tournament organizer uh, and a copy I... of your army list written yeah. out to show your opponent yeah i've all of your rule books and if you're feeling extra spicy your opponent's rule books as well um i've never done that dice tape measures glues water snacks phone charger um, bear in, just bear in mind tom that this is a, a recommendation to someone going to their first tournament take what you need to play your eye do not worry about anybody else take what you need to play your eye you said yeah that's a squeaky chair yeah my chair is really squeaky <laughs> yeah really squeaky um the reason i would be packing um so I, if I'm bringing armies of the hobbits for both my armies, for instance, for my army, I would still have the army of the Lord of Rings book in there, um, even now, because I'll turn up to an event, I'll see an army, but I've got no idea what it is, and I'll have the armies of the Lord of Rings rule book out in front of me with my opponent's army in it, going, "Well, what does that do? Well, let's have a look," because it's it's a lot easier for me personally. Um, and when I started out, someone suggested that I did that, and it was a massive help. So that's yeah. what I'm suggesting now. Yeah, um, yeah, because it's just it's something really upsetting about having to go to your opponent. So I'm planning to do like in your head, you're planning to do some cool little like, oh, I'm gonna heroic combat into that guy and I'm gonna kill him to go, oh, what fight value is that guy? Oh, and does he got this and has he got that? And then they're has going, he got right. Yeah. <laughs> this guy here, has he got any might left? Oh, how how hurt is he? Can I get can I measure to him? Um, yeah, it's a bit, you know, what's the word the kids use? A bit bait, in it? If you want to be gamey, you can use that as a trick as well to make them think you're going to go for said model, then don't. Yeah, yeah, you could do that if you were uh, Lee. Who... Don't do that. That's next level. That, that's not me, but yeah, <laughs> you can do. That's, that's a future episode. How that's to win the mind games. Let's not be a Lee. <laughs> okay. So we're packed. Our bags are packed. We're going to bed at a nice early time. We're not um, going to bed super, super late. And we're getting... Uh, I mean, if you're really fancy, go down the night before and stay in a hotel. I have done that. Um, I did it a few times. And it's so much better. Yeah. Um, like the, the difference it. in going down the night before and having a good night's sleep and waking up at half eight having breakfast and walking around rather than waking up at five in the morning and getting in the car and driving for three hours and getting stuck yeah. in traffic and getting wound up and ah, it's so much better i did it for scouring of cheshire last year um it was a saturday sunday tournament and on the friday i went up and then a few of us went out got a curry and got very drunk instead which i think if, defeated the objective if nothing else just make sure you're there really early um because you can scope out the place you can get settled and that you're not in a big rush to get to your table and stuff yeah. you're all nice and calm that's the biggest thing actually one of the biggest things i would say is get there a good hour before Have a walk well around. we were about to go on to what do we do in the morning the morning of the event make sure we get there nice and early as he was saying and then yeah go in and check out where it is it's my favorite thing go in and work out Work yeah. out where your table is because most of the events will post up like the tables and things yeah. before the time. So you go in, work out where the tables are, go and say hi to the tournament organizer, um, yeah. make sure they know you're there. That's really important. And yeah. you're out of times I've been looking for people and they're still sat in the room. Um, they just haven't come and said hello. Um, make sure they're there, make sure you know where your table is, make sure you know where the toilets and things are, just like little was, things. Yeah, I was gonna say um, that. And get yourself sorted, ready to go. Um, yeah, really good advice, Lee. Thank you. You're welcome. Cool. I feel like I should be painting something too. <laughs> Sorry, I'm trying to glue on a really small hand to a, a, a to an arm, and it ain't working. And I'm getting a little bit stressed. <laughs> That's okay. That's all right um so we're there we're at the venue we arrived at our first one we arrived nice and early we've been in we've said hello made sure everyone's there we know where our table is we've kind of like 
had a look at some of the other tables, make sure you know what the trade and things are. There's no like weird surprises. You've been to the loo. And then we're there standing by a table waiting for your opponent to turn up. When your opponent turns up, what are you going to do, Jamie? Introduce yourself. Yeah. Say hello. Always nice. Have Always a nice, nice. chat. Yeah, we're all there for the same purpose. We're all there to have fun, play games. And if you actually introduce yourself and your opponent are uh, friendly chatting away, I find it makes games a lot better and the games go a lot smoother. Yeah. I've, I've definitely had a couple where I've turned up and I've been like, hello, mate. And they've just kind of looked at you a bit like, you can tell they're half asleep still. Like, oh, right. And then the whole game's a bit like, can I, can I, am I allowed to talk to you? Can we, can we chat about this? <laughs> Um, yeah. So yeah, introduce yourself, have a nice little chat. Um, if you've got time before the game starts, because you're at your table nice and early, like we're suggesting, uh, have a chat about their army, have a yeah. chat about your army, and make sure you kind of ask any questions. Like if you see a model that you've never seen before, ask what it does. Um, everyone should be willing to talk to you about their stuff um, and kind of go, oh yeah, this is Elrond, he has this foresight thing and he can change these dice, but you know, just so you know, it has to happen here. So I'll be doing it then. Um, a little when things also, that. When he's on the team. Yeah. O on that sort of vein, when your opponent does ask those questions, don't be like, oh, we're asking those questions. Like, or if they're like, because when you explain it to them and then they're still a bit unsure, just get the book out and show them the book and go, here you are, here's the page, look at the yeah. thing. If anything, I would recommend, if someone says to me, or oh, how does that work? Just give them the book because a you might explain it wrong and then they might get caught out later on and they they're not that they don't trust you but if they see it and write in themselves they know right that's it that's the rule yeah. if no i bring a legendary yeah. legion to an event i print out the page from that legend legion from the book yeah. and i have it with i have enough copies that i know that i can give one to each opponent for the entire thing yeah and i I will say like here here is my legend religion this is what it does read it because it does some cool stuff especially that bit there and i'm going to use that on you so make sure you know what it does yeah because nobody wants to win by catching you out with something that you didn't know was a rule yeah that's yeah. just well, not fun for anyone. Uh, <laughs> um it's just it's all away, always about getting rid of the ambiguity always yes. so then like um, the next thing would be once you said hello you look at the table right Yes. And then you That's... go over the terrain. What does this yeah. do? What are we counting that as? Segway. Segway. Beautiful. Yes. We're going through, we're going, so this is difficult terrain. This is hill. Do I need to do a climb test to go up there? Will, will my cavalry fit through that hole? Because again, you want to have this conversation oh. now before the game, rather than in the middle of a game, and you go, ah, I'm going to put this guy through that hole. And the opponent goes, no, you Maybe can't not. do it. And you kind of go, mm, but it's still fit. And uh, your opponent goes, well, no, it doesn't fit, actually. Yeah, That's actually happened to me quite a bit. Um, yeah. and it's always when you forget to talk about it beforehand. It's, it's horrible. It's horrible. It's awkward. The worst thing I always find, like, when we've forgotten to say, you know, so that's difficult terrain, right? Um, and then someone will come up and just start moving through it. And you go, in my head, that was difficult terrain. But yeah. we didn't talk about it. And he's gone, well, it's not difficult terrain, is it? Because it's not this. And you kind of go, ah, well, I thought I had him trapped behind some difficult stuff. And but no. That guy. Uh, <laughs> no, because we didn't talk about it. So just go, yes. Fine. That's what I mean. I mean, sorry. So if you would then bring it up and go, that's difficult terrain. Yes. Then you're that guy. Because you didn't yes. your... no one, And no one wants to be that guy. No. Well, some people do. Um, but yes. Um, Make sure you talk about it because, again, all these conversations you want to have before the game starts. And then once the game starts, the time's up on the thing. The top, like when this is the round, time has started. Now go. What's the very first thing you say to your opponent? Good luck. Yeah, good luck. Great yeah. game. Let's, let's, let's have a nice game. Uh, I always say that. Little, little friendly handshake or a fist bump or a little elbow nudge or whatever we're up to these days. Um, and just generally, yeah, make sure everyone knows we're here for a good time. Um, yeah. and we are here. It's at the end of the day, everyone's here for a good time. So, yeah, let's let's make sure we do. 
Um, you're playing for the game. Uh, if any kind of like rules, disputes, or anything come up, how do you think you should handle that at a table, Lee? Um, so some places will ask you to call for a TO or judge. Um, is this for like a rules question? Yeah. Yeah, so I would have the chat with my opponent beforehand. And if we can't come to an amicable decision, um, or like one person proves the other person wrong by looking at the rule book and such, I would just go, all right, okay, fine, let's go get a third third person view on this yeah. and then go find the TO, the tournament organiser, and ask their opinion. You know, Can you just come over here a sec and just have a look at what we're doing and tell us who's right, who's wrong. Not necessarily who's right or who's wrong, but just a way to resolve this. Yeah. So... Um, one of the things we always used to do, I used to do a lot of work with children, um, and one of the rules we had in our classroom was um, you had to do three things before me, um, which was to stop children coming up to me all the time with stupid questions. Uh, so you talk to your friends, talk to the guy across the table, see if you can, you know, yeah. if anyone knows the answer, and if no one knows the answer, well, cool, let's go in the rule book and have a look. If you can't find it in the rule book, check the FAQs. And if you can't find it in the FAQs, which are listed on the Warhammer community website, but anyone doesn't know, um, head on over to the tournament organizer and make sure that you both go to the tournament organizer or you bring them back to the table, one yes. of the two. Um, yeah. I won't, as a TO, I won't tell you a ruling away from the table because it's no fair, it's not fair if, you know, say Jamie and Lee are having an argument about who can use the ring of jury right now. And yeah. Lee comes to me and says, oh, but I can use the ring of Durin because I want to. And I go, yeah, you can use it. It's fine. And then he goes back to the table and goes, well, Tom told me I could use it. Um, yeah. It doesn't feel doesn't feel right, you know, because um, no. also he could lie, you know. Um, so, yeah, come back. And then the final resort, which will be on the tournament organized discretion, is, you know, just chuck a dice for it and see what happens. Yeah. Um, and the, the most important thing with all of this is whatever conclusion the organizer slash judge comes to, that's the that's the decision. Don't try and argue and keep on going on for ages and ages. Because again, I've seen that happen where you know someone's very positive in their head that this is the rule, mm -hmm. and they've spent 10, 15 minutes trying to talk to someone around to it, and then it's turned out it's not, but then you don't have time to actually play your game afterwards. Yeah. So, you know, accept the ruling, take it yeah. on the chin if it's not the one you wanted. And then, yeah, you can talk about it afterwards. That's fine. But go back and finish playing the game. Yes. Um, that's the most important thing. I think. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> Good. Remember, yeah. we're all adults and we're all here to push plastic around a board. Like, it's toy like soldiers, people. you know? Exactly. So it's always at the end of the day. But these are resin, Lee. Resin's a type of plastic, isn't it? No, it's a type of resin. It's no idea. Everything's a type of plastic. I've got a work. nice big gap in my wings. I work with plastic, Tom. Come on. That's a rude way to talk about Lee's mum. Right, anyway. Oh. Back, to the back, to the back to the subject. Back to the subject. <laughs> right, so... We've had a little rules chat. We have come to the conclusion, Tournament Organs said this is what the rule is. We've cracked on with our game. Now, we're getting fairly close to the end of the game. You're looking up at the time. See, there's like 10 minutes left. The Tournament Organiser will probably also say you've got 15, you've got 10 or something like that left. Um, how would you approach this, Lee? Or Jamie? No, Jamie. Jamie, I haven't asked you a second. Okay. So, uh... Getting towards the end of the game, um, if there is a lot of fights that still need working out and still need doing, but you probably don't have enough time to do them all, I would suggest doing the ones that actually make a difference towards the way the game goes. If you're pushed, if you're that pushed for time, do the fights that actually matter. Oh, you've still got 10 minutes left at this point. Oh, oh you've got plenty of time. Oh, no. But obviously don't, yeah, don't purposely... Yeah, don't purposely... Um, or I'm I'm winning. If, if, the, if the game ends on this turn, I win. <laughs> don't purposely slow play it to get the win that so, way. 
one Maybe. of the things I was hoping you would say was, right, we've got 10 minutes left. Me and you both know. It's like me and Leah played the game a lot. We're using like a, let's say we're both using a fairly elite army. We look at that and we go, we can get two whole turns out of this, mate. Yeah. Like if we're rapid, we do our moving, we do key fights yeah. only. We can get two turns out of this. And you both say, yeah. two turns? We get two, two turns, turns in? Yeah. yeah. Or, or this will, we'll only get one turn in. So we'll finish what we're doing, do one turn and then go. Yeah. And as long as you both know that's the situation, you both agree. Yeah. That's it. Done. Um, our good friend Rowan, uh, when he got to, he, they had this at one of the events where they agreed this and then they realized they'd made a boo boo and there was actually still 20 minutes left on the clock. But they said, we've got two turns left. So they played two turns and then they actually went, ah, we do have more time, but we've both just played it out like we only have two minutes left. So let's just stop because that's what yeah. we decided. And yeah, if yeah. that's what, like, if that's how you decided it, that's how you decided it because. Yep. As long as both players agreed, um, stick to it because there's nothing yes. worse than when you think you finished a game and then the other guy goes, oh, no, let's play one more time quickly, go on. And you kind of go, oh, I've used all my might up and I've done all this and I've done all that because I thought it was the last turn because that's what we agreed. Yeah. Yeah, lovely. And then when it gets that last turn, like you're saying, yes, um, if, you know, the game has ended, all the other games around you are finished, You've got a whole load of stuff still on the table, but there's a couple of key fights. Do those key fights, get them done. Um, you don't necessarily need to roll all the others, but sometimes it's fun, you know? Yeah. Yeah. If you if you have time, like if this is the last turn and we've still got five, six minutes, do the key fights first that actually make a difference to the game. Oh, we've still got time. We'll do the others. Yeah. Yeah. But you don't work want to start. Out, work out break limits. See if yeah. it's going to be relevant. Move yeah. on. I but would you, say though I would only do that on the last turn. I would yeah, that's do what, that. That's what if, yeah, 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 yeah. I know what you mean. I would only do that on the last turn. If yeah. I'm like, well, we've got 10 minutes. Well, this is probably going to be a last turn. Let's just quickly check break limits. Is that going to be relevant? All right, move on. Yeah. Yeah. There's a there's a different conversation there, which comes down to the being aware of the game ending. So let's say you've got 25 minutes left. Um, and you know you need to get six turns of movement in. Say you're playing recon and you need to get off the board, you need this many turns. You could make the decision with the rest of your army that going into combat isn't necessarily worth it and it's just going to slow you down so you can just disengage with all your dudes and go, oh, I don't want to fight, so I'm just going to run back six inches and nab away from you. And now there aren't fights, we're not rolling dice. Um, and you can make that decision. That's tempo and clock management. That's strategy and serious stuff. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah. Have a have a little chat. Make sure you agree when the game ends, and then um, yeah, yeah, have a good time. I'd also suggest as well. Uh, we all we all oh, that's the wrong part. We all obviously read the match play guide or the mission at the start of the game. I would also suggest getting towards the end of the game. You both have another look, just to make sure that right. Um, let's just say it's uh, command battlefield, just table quarters, and you think. You read it at the start and you think, right, having a model in it gets me the maximum VPs, but actually it doesn't. You need to get two in there. So read it again, realising, oh, okay, I need two in there so that you know exactly what you have to do in those in those vital few turns. Yeah. I'm not so sure. No. <laughs> no. I, again, I, this might be, be too gamey of me, but if it is, say, Command the Battlefield, you quite clearly, at the start, of when you're talking about the um board like we said right that's the middle bam there's the middle you've yeah. got your match play guide sat there i've got mine here we both read through the scenario beforehand because that's what i always do right what vps how do we get it blah 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 mm -hmm. but then whilst we get through the game i wouldn't then say I, I wouldn't say that like that's on them to remember do you know what i mean no no, no. no. this this is advice for somebody going to their first tournament yes which is the whole point of this video, I'm saying my advice to the person going to their first tournament, towards the end of the game, read your match play guide to know exactly what you need to be doing in the scenario. Uh, you're, saying, you're saying the same thing, uh, but you're saying it differently. So what yeah. you're saying is, if I'm playing the game yeah. and I'm coming towards the end of the game, I'm going to go back into my match play guide and I'm going to read my thing again and make sure I know what I need to yes. do. Yes. I'm, yes. Not going to say to my, I'm not going to say to my opponent, Oh mate, you've only got one model in there. You should get yeah. two in there. 
No, yeah, that's, 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 that's your mess up. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Ah, if, right. If this yes. is your first you're tournament, both saying the same thing. New to the game, read this scenario to make sure yes. you know what you need to be if doing. If you've played the scenario yeah. two hundred times, read the scenario because there will be things that catch you out. Um, they will. Yeah. Yes. Sorry, Jamie. I just thought you meant yeah. like you were telling them how to get the stuff. No, if you're no, no. a friendly, if you're a friendly like first player event, you know, yeah. or you're at the bottom tables, the game doesn't matter. You're in the middle table. Then I always, then I will talk about them. Right. You know, you've only got four yeah. VPs here right now. Yeah. But if I'm like winning every game and I'm at the top, I don't, I wouldn't say. But if it becomes irrelevant, um, yeah, yeah. then yeah, we all well, uh, we're all there talking yeah. the time. I'm saying personally, read your match play guide to know, yes. so you know what you need to do. Okay, that's good. Cool. Yeah, yeah. Is, we're all saying the same thing. The the, yeah, there is times towards the end of the game where you go, you you think you only need one, and then you read the match play guide and go, crap, I need two, and you've got to somehow figure out to get another guy over. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Whereas if you yeah. if you know what you're doing and you've read it, you realise you, you need two. You've got time then to plan. My my favourite little bit in any game when we're playing is when the other person goes quite quiet for a couple of minutes and then just opens up their match play guide and goes <laughs> yes then uh, looks at the Tom, table a bit and kind of goes mm. yes Tom did this to me <laughs> I, I did this to Ryan Farmer shout out I David say it Farmer. All the time. David Farmer sorry I say it all the time but yeah my first ever event is assassination He's like, I've killed your, I've killed your, um, my target, which is my captain. Well, I've won now. I went, All right, we'll keep playing. We'll see. And then turns out breaking and unbreaking and then killing his leader and killing his, um, my assassin target, even though it wasn't with my assassin, may, means I won by one point. And he's an experienced gamer. So again, yeah. that goes back to read the scenario. He's That's very eight, seven win. That one, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. And then he, and he lost it because he got overcome. And that's it. Just pay attention. Yeah. Keep an eye out on those. It's so good. I will never not. I will never not mention that. Good. Okay. Jamie would never not mention what he was going to mention either. But um, that's just because it's funny. <laughs> um, no, uh, the brave king of Rohan running away. And winning the game. Uh, so we've talked about that. We've finished our game. Um, yep. Most tournaments will have a wee little kind of score slip that would have been brought around. Um, yep. Make sure you fill it out nice and clearly. And the other thing that I'm still surprised, but I don't see people do very often, is just check it with your opponent. Yeah. Um, the amount of times I've had score slips back that have got like from the same, I always give one to each player when I run a tournament. Um, I've seen other, I've played in lots of tournaments where you get one per table. Um, but I give two to each player because you often get two different scores back, <laughs> um, which is great fun. And then you can kind of go around and go, hey, mate, you've written it 7-5 and he's written it 6-5. And then you work it out again and then you realise it's wrong. Um, so always double check with your opponent that you've got the same scores written down. Um, make sure you've slowly, carefully worked out VPs and not accidentally giving yourself a loss, Lee. Um, yeah. yeah, that also happened. <laughs> Tell the nice people a story. <laughs> yeah so again i've forgotten his name again he was a really good player too and um it was capture the flag basically sean lang retrieval that's it retrieval that's it and he picked up um my flag um and then got to the end of the game and he didn't he moved my flag but he didn't hold it anymore because i think he either ran away or i shot him or something or other yeah. um and i picked his up moved it and was still holding it at the end of the game. I read it, and I read it wrong, and I won, won. but actually, I won, (laughs) because he didn't hold the the relic anymore. The wording on it is really strange on that one, to be fair, because it's just like, if you've retrieved the relic, and he's like, well, I I, I picked it up and moved this. Oh, it's weird. Um, But yeah, I think at the time, he he's already run away from courage, you said. That was that. Yeah. Yeah. holding it. I mean, we've all had that. Um, but yeah, just make sure you check it nice and clearly. Have a lovely time. Hand that score in as soon as you can. Because again, from an organiser's point of view, I have also been waiting for one score to come in, looked round, and the people I'm waiting for a score from are standing at a bar. And I'm there like, we're all waiting for the 
next round's pairs to go up so everyone can start finding their tables and you two are standing at the bar with your score slip in hand, just standing at the bar, get a drink. <laughs> and it's just like, you've walked past me to go there. I don't need to be chasing people. Because um, if you've not been to many tournaments before, um, there's normally like a 15, 20 minute gap between the games. Um, that is for basically the organiser to work out where the next pairings are. They normally post them up on Facebook or shout them out uh, so you know which table you're going to. Um, it's really, really, it just slows everything down if you don't get those scores back in in time. Um, and those classic ones of someone playing a game 20 minutes after the uh, last turn has been called. That's always fun. Um, but yeah, cool. So we've done that. Happy days. So let's say you've gone through your whole, like, your whole tournament. You're coming up to the end of the tournament. You've played your final game. Um, Lee, you finished two and two at this tournament. Um, okay. How, how do you feel that went for you? My first tournament? Yeah. Marvellous. Way better than I could have hoped for, for a 2-2. Yeah. When you go to your first tournament, don't try and win any games. It sounds daft. Go to learn. <laughs> um, go to lose, in fact. The more games you lose, the more you learn. Um, yes, so go to have fun and learn. Don't worry I mean, about your I mean, do not. try and win. Um, yeah, I mean, like, <laughs> don't score an own goal in football. Like, you yeah. Know, it's, not, it's not be crazy, but... Yeah, um, you, lose, you you learn an awful lot from a loss. You learn a little bit less from a win. So yeah, don't don't be too upset. Um, we didn't mention it at the start, actually, did we? Um, that we always um, talk about what our aims are for the tournament. Yeah. And kind of so, I if I am going to a tournament, I know I want to go kind of three and one or two and two or four and maybe if I'm feeling really spicy. Um, and you set yourself a realistic target. So knowing like my first couple of tournaments. My realistic target was, I'm going to go get one win. Then it was, right, I'm now going to try and go, and I'm going to try and go 50-50. And then you start thinking, ooh, what if I can get to, like, three and one, four and oh? Ooh, now we're talking spicy. Um, and it's little things like that. Set yourself a nice, clear, easy target beforehand, um, and then have a look afterwards about kind of how it didn't come off. Maybe it did come off. What could you do better? Um, and... After each and every one of your games, what would you do with your opponent after you've handed in a score slip, Jamie? Uh, I would not run away from the table. I would actually chat with my opponent about uh, what I did well, what they did well, what do you think I could improve on, uh, how the game went. I, I like chatting with people because quite often when you go into tournaments, especially big tournaments, these might not be people that you've met or that you talk to on the regular. And it's actually nice to meet other people. Yeah. Yeah, so it's nice to chat to people and make friends and stuff and also make sure you find out kind of if there's anything glaring you wrong. I think the question I tend to ask is, if you were me, what would you have done there? Um, and, and kind of, or what were you most scared of in my list? Yeah. Um, yeah. And then you can I, find I, I, out. I, what was that, Lee? No, go on, carry on. Okay. Um, yeah. What were you like most scared of me doing? Like, what was the the most biggest concerning thing? Because there are sometimes that I've been playing a game with someone, and in the back of my head, I'm going, "Oh gosh, I hope he doesn't see this kind of heroic combat here, where mm -hmm. he can heroic combat into my key model and kill it." Yeah. And I know I've left it exposed. But I keep it very quiet in my head and try and do my best poker face. And then after the game, I'll say, "Well, actually, I don't know if you saw it, but at the time, you could have done this, and that could have won you the game." And they'll go, "Oh, I didn't realize that." And yeah. we do it all the time when we play. And there are, it's a little bit irritating now, to be honest, <laughs> because when, in particular me and Lee, because we play like multiple times a week a lot of time, the, <laughs> we just know what each other's doing half the time. <laughs> it's really, I'm like, ah, cool, I've got my bat swarms, I've got my spiders, I'm going to do all these little tricks. And then Lee's just like, actually doing not, because I'm going to make sure I block this guy off of here. And I'm going to make sure there's not a space for that guy to go in there. And I'm kind of like, ah. Oh. But that's my favourite. And then you go, oh, well, if it was against somebody who didn't know me, that would have worked. <laughs> <laughs> that would have worked okay. against someone else. Yeah. <laughs> I always, um, my thing I always say is, what did I do wrong? Yeah. That is my first question. What did I do wrong there? And then quite often, your opponent, if they've won, will happily tell you what you did wrong. Oh, yeah, they, they love it. Won. 
<laughs> Someone who's beating you absolutely loves telling so, you exactly how they beat you. Yeah. I mean, we all, we're all like that. It is human nature. We are all like that. All of us. And then if you have finished and you've got plenty of time left, you've had a chat with your opponent, you should pop over to some of the other tables and just have a look at what's going on. You know, wander up to that little top row of tables where the, where the, the top players in theory are and have a look and see what they're doing. Even better, let's say I'm using Goblin Town and I'm down on like table 20 somewhere, chilling out in the fun tables. But I see, oh, actually, you know, um, our friends are here's over there and he's got Goblin Town. He's up on table two with Goblin Town. I'm going to go see what he's doing with his Goblin Town army and have a little look um, and see if you can pick up any kind of cool things from that or just like how they build it differently and that kind of thing. I'd agree. The only thing I would say, and this is again, this is more of like an etiquette thing. When you do start walking around and you do start going up to the top tables, be careful. Don't stand too close. Sometimes like a game could be quite tense at the top tables, especially if it's like an 80 or 100 or something. Don't stand too close. Don't be like looking over and going, what'd you do that for? Like just, stand back <laughs> and just yeah. from a distance um, and don't necessarily comment on it on anything there and then. Um, just do it at the end of the game. There was, I, I have a, a bad example of that from when I was playing a game and, and we have the, the slight, it's a happy problem to have for us personally, if we normally go with a group of people. Um, but it was the final game of the tournament. Everyone else's games had finished. My like, time had been called. We were just going through the final thing. I was playing against Goblin Town. It was on Commander Battlefield and I'd broken into turn before. I needed all of his courage tests to fail, basically, him to run away. And a few of our friends had come over and they were kind of, I was sat down letting my opponent just, just roll his courage tests and it wasn't going well for him. And I was trying my hardest to just sit there and be quiet and not say anything. My darling friends were standing just behind me and went, ooh, 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 that's gone bad, hasn't it? Oh, no. Um, and I was a bit like, I turned around, I was like, just go away. Like, you're making it so much worse. Yeah. <laughs> like, because... Yeah. I mean, that was him losing the game because of some dice rolls, and that felt really bad. Yeah, and it was just a bit yeah. like you're just making it worse by standing there and commenting. Um, Another good example of that was um, Scott at uh, Worcester War Games, the first one they did. I think he was basically on top table on day two, and he had two wild wags or three wild wags in the opponent's camp, and they all ran away from courage. But we're all stood back watching it unfold. And we were all very careful not to go over and be like, oh, this is really tight. Like, yeah. you've, got, you've got to be careful. You can whisper a couple of sets back and you go, oh, that was really bad. Did you see that? Oh, that's funny. Yeah. And you can, yeah, yeah. oh, look at his yeah. face. Oh, he's fuming. Um, but as long as you say it quietly, out of the way, it's fine. That's but just... if you say it kind of standing right behind them going, oh, that's gone bad, mate. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's a little bit dodge. Um, the same thing with pictures, by the way. Um, loads, of people take, <laughs> loads of people take photos at events. Um, make sure you just like chat to your opponent and make sure they're cool with it. Because um, I had like, there was a guy who uh, I asked once and he said, actually, no, um, I do this as a job. I don't, I, I can't have a pictures like going up on Facebook and stuff um, for whatever reason. But, you know, do ask because some people have reasons. Um, Similarly, but, if you're video recording, Ask people's permission first if you're going to record some of the game or a chat afterwards or something. Because some people might not be happy with it. And when you ask their permission, if they say no, don't do it. <laughs> Respect that decision. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, lovely. Um, we've done our tournament. We've finished two and two. We've had a lovely time. We've kind of met or exceeded our targets. Um, or we didn't and we don't feel too bad about that it's okay I was going to ask Jamie how we'd feel about that but I felt like I was too pointed at Jamie and I was a bit mean wow. uh, <laughs> um, and we've come home afterwards um, one of the things we all do which is quite nice I quite like it I don't know about anyone else but um, one of the, the, our group chat at home is never more lively than just after a tournament yeah, because everyone goes in and is like, oh, so I played against this guy and this guy and this guy, and then I did this and he did that, and then they kind of go, oh, why did you do that? Oh, you should have done this, and then you go, oh, that would have been a really good idea, and talk about it with your. I mean, we're blessed because we have like a good group of people to chat about it with. 
Yes. Um, but it comes back to kind of talking about what happened while it's fresh in your memory. Yeah. Um, yeah. And trying to like work out what you could have done better. Yeah. And the player base that we have in our group chat, like we're, it's a fairly competent group, I'd say, like fairly spicy. We're all very much competitive focused. Well, most of us are. So yeah, a couple of us are. It's fairly competent left. and then leave. But yeah, yeah, that is great. I love that. Yeah, yeah. And another thing I would suggest about uh, after you've come home from your tournament and after you've uh, you're, you're you're on that sort of like tournament lull of the come down is if you have had any pictures that you took or you've had any people that you've uh, met or any groups that you've been recommended to join, do that while you're thinking about it, rather than rather than uh, somebody said, oh, yeah, join our group. We play in a sort of area near you. There's always stuff going on. Do it while you're thinking about it, rather than, oh, what was that? What was that group I was supposed to join where I could get some games in near me? Do it while you're thinking about it. Upload and- your pictures to a couple of groups that you're in or whatever, so that other people can see, oh, there was a tournament just up the road. I didn't know about that. I'll have a look for the next time they have a tournament. And when you put pictures up from your games, it's really good because sometimes the person you're playing goes, ah, I remember playing you. That was a great game. Yeah. I didn't know you only lived here. Let's um, let's meet yeah. up and play. And we've had that a few times where we've kind of met up with some people after. Yeah. What's up, Lee? Um, going, going back, I don't know if you talked about this because I joined midway through. Uh, going back to playing the actual game, did you talk about like, being clear about ranges and things like that um we did not can i just no. briefly can i briefly touch yeah you, you you have a chat mate come on just because we had a really good example of it of the day so we're friends of sw miniatures obviously we're, we all play on both of the channels we'll talk on both of them and we're in the i'm in a little league with um ewan the other day we played the riverdale Knights. so you can check that video out on their channel but bef- we had one little moment halfway through where we, I started talking, I think, to Jamie in the background, and then I look back at the table, and suddenly Aaron is into foreign, and he's like, that looked quite far for 10 inches. And I'm like, oh, that's quite far. Could he make it? And he went, yeah, yeah, I checked it. And I went, oh, okay. He went, Why, do you not think he would? And then you get that little bit of awkwardness, and I'm like, well, no, if you say he is, then he is. He's like, oh, yeah, well, I'm not sure now. So <laughs> whenever you do anything important, or like you're charging a banner, or you're charging a heat leader, um, you always measure out and go, I think he's in here. Can yeah. you check, please? That's and one of the things we do with each other all the time, isn't it? I go, oh, I think that's three inches. Can you check? I always say, if it's a clip, if it's like a, a key range, I'm often, yeah. can you just check? I think I've got line of sight there, but can you just come and check now? I think you're yeah. happy with that. And, and you know, was, can you tell um, me, is he in range of that? Yeah. Yeah. It was just a really good example that I thought of because mm-hmm. it literally happened yesterday. And yeah. like he's still quite a new player to events, so he didn't necessarily know that. And I feel yeah. I, I think I felt I made him feel a bit bad, so I didn't no, mean no. it like that. You uh, rascal! But, um... No, I don't think you made him feel bad at all. Uh, it was it was it, it like just... the way Lee did it was absolutely fine. And uh, I think Ewan is becoming a better player because of instances like that. Yeah, one of the things yeah. that's really good to do as well, which obviously we didn't talk about, is while you're playing through the game, um, I tend to for the most part, say exactly what I'm doing as I do it. So yes. I say, you know, ah, so your your guys here can move six inches, but I'm Rohan and I've got throwing spears. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to park myself seven inches away from those dudes who've got six inch range. Yeah. And then you can't yeah. charge me, but I can still throw my throw weapon day. Yeah. Um, and maybe you don't, yeah. you know, if it's a really, really, really like top end game, you maybe don't tell them that's why you're doing it. But you just say, yeah. I think I'm six inches away from him. Yeah. And then they can go, yes, you're six inches away from him. Um, yeah. Instead of going, oh, I think I'm six inches away from him, then he suddenly charged me. And then, because the worst thing is when you've moved your model and then someone accuses you of being out of range. Because I've yeah. had that where, and let's be honest, he was really far out. <laughs> <laughs> um, and he just went, well, it's happened now, hasn't it? What are you going to do about it? Um, mm. The, and again, that just comes back to getting rid of ambiguity in the whole game. So there's another, there's another little one as well. Well, a little, but these are these are two really quite big points that I find at going to events. Mm-hmm. The other thing is, if somebody says to you, "Oh, that guy, he's fight four, isn't he?" 
and they go, yes, he's fight four. Okay, that, that might be the case. But then if you go, if I ask that same question, I go, is that guy fight four? Yes, he's fight four, but he can yeah. go to fight five if I do this. Yeah, yeah. Um, yes. You know, and that comes back to checking the lists and the army books, like you said, Tom, earlier. When you go against your opponent's army, if you can, check out what his army does so you don't get caught out by that. Again, yeah. that does change slightly if you're like top tables, I guess. People should know that. But it all comes down to your perception of how the game's going and how how, how seriously you think your opponent's going to take the game. So if they're all there about the fun, you remind them. Yeah. Do you, do you know what I'm trying to say? I do, yes. Um, one of the big things, yeah. If you if you're ever asked a question, answer it and answer it fully. Yeah, I, yeah. I hate those people who go, I go, yeah. oh, is he fight free? And you go, yeah, he's fight free. But yeah, yeah, <laughs> he's actually within this bubble here that gives him a plus one fight because there's a like you know Boromir's banners next to him. But that model's fight free, yeah. But Boromir's yeah. banner makes but fight four. Just... If they don't ask the question, then don't tell them. If they yeah. don't ask, then they don't know. Don't don't tell them. But if they ask you specifically, is that guy fight four? Yes, he is now, but he won't be. Always yeah. tell them. Always tell them. Yes, uh, I'm not going to tell you. I'm not going to tell you how to beat me. But if you ask me a direct question, I am going to answer it. No. Like, I'm yeah. not going to go up to you. Go, oh, I wouldn't charge him there because he, he is fight four because of this. But if you say, is he fight yeah. four? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Good point. <laughs> There's two big ones that I found, and I've, it's happened to me a couple of times at events and things, and it's just getting it gets a bit awkward. So, yeah. oh, okay, well, I guess it's okay now. Like, <laughs> yeah. Oh, because the worst thing is when it happens after it. That's the, yeah. Yeah. Make sure you know it's all right. Cool. Yeah. And um, and then like, so my my other little big thing, um, and this again mainly as an organizer of things. So I've had it where a few days after an event, someone's come back and said, oh, just so you know, my mate Jimmy was really annoyed that this happened in his game and he felt like his opponent cheated him. And I'm there like, well, he didn't say anything at the time and no one yeah. said anything to me at the time. He, not even like after the game, he didn't come up and say, oh, this was a bad thing. If something happens in your game and you want to question it, please mention it at the time because after the time, there's absolutely nothing I can do about it. And the same thing happens with scores. So again, like we're all human, anyone kind of doing organising stuff. We've got to sit there and type in like 32 scores into a computer and make it work. Every now and again, I accidentally press the wrong button. Something like that happens. And if you know that you were just playing on table six and you lost, but now you're on table four, maybe mention <laughs> it. <laughs> maybe, maybe don't wait <laughs> until after the, event, after the event happens and you know the results have gone up and things. And then go, oh, by the way, <laughs> on game two, this happens. And you kind of go, oh, well. That's changed everything, hasn't it? That kind of leads into another question I ask my opponent when they first rock up. After game one, I'd be like, so oh, yeah. did, you, did you win your last game then? And they go, oh, yeah, I won it. Right, okay, cool. Yeah. <laughs> and you won yours. And then if they go, oh, no, I lost mine, and you won yours, you'll be like, hang on a minute. What are you doing here? Uh, Get I back do down that. to your tables, peasant. <laughs> I do that subconsciously throughout the event as I'm going on, and I'm two and two now. And right. I'm like, oh, what are you? You're two and two? Okay, cool. Yeah, how, how did your game go? Oh, yeah, this happened. What's always fun as well is when they go, oh, well, yeah, I had a good game, but I lost because this guy did this. And you go, oh, okay, cool. Noted. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm, I'm going to have to go, guys. I'm going to have to love you and leave you, I'm afraid. Yeah, that's all right. We're, um, we're coming to the end, anyway. It's all right. Wait, um, say your thing. Say your favourite thing. Ring the bell. Yay. <laughs> See you guys. Um, yeah, sorry. Um, if you are still with us thank you for sticking around um i don't know jamie do you have anything else you want to add while we're here um yeah it's just, just sort of like the the main thing i know this is obviously a lot of information and there is a lot of things going on when you oh we've talked to... so much yeah we do we do that but i know <laughs> i know obviously there's a lot of things going on when you do when you go to a tournament there's a lot going on that day there's 
that you might have travel you might have obviously you've got to eat while you're there don't forget to eat while you're there it's a big thing um but have fun like don't stress too much about how the games are going and what your record is and are oh, the guys on the youtube channel said that i should be just have fun you know this is a fun game um I've, I, some of my best games are where I've been absolutely destroyed, but I had a really good time doing it. So just have fun, guys. Yeah. And the same goes if you are actually destroying someone. Make sure it's fun. Yes. Um, it yes. is possible to win most sporting at an event while still 12 nilling three out of four of your opponents. Um, because it has happened. Ah, the top cats. Um, hmm? Yeah, um, so it's good. It's a good time. We're all right. So uh, thanks for hanging out with us. If you're still here, um, make yeah. sure you've liked and subscribed the thing. Um, we always forget to say it in the middle because no one's watching at this point anyway. But it's all right. We're here. If you are still here, say Chelsea suck. Um, Don't say that at all. <laughs> uh, and hopefully we'll see you next week. Definitely. Bye. Bye bye. I would wait, but I've currently got a drill on the Black Numenorean in hand. Bye. Bye.